While going to purchase an Intel processor, the very first thing that will pop up in your mind is whether to go for an i3, i5, i7, or i9 series of processors. Also, there is a concern of generations as performance speed varies between them. Going for the latest one is not always the smartest decision as it can hurt your wallet while you could do just fine with an earlier generation. In this video, we will be talking about Intel's core series to give you a complete understanding of which processor you should set up for. Keep on watching and let's get started. A processor can have multiple cores and these are physically melded onto one chip itself. Having multiple cores is essential for both gaming and regular use as they are good at performing complex sets of tasks at any given time. Threads on the other hand are the number of tasks that a CPU core can perform individually. The more cores a CPU has, the better it can multitask. Initially, Core i3 processors used to have two cores, while Core i5 and i7 incorporated four cores and eight cores respectively. More recently, the 11th gen Core i3 processor now has up to four cores, i5 has six, while i7 and i9 have up to eight cores with a maximum of 16 threads. Taking one step back at the 10th gen Comment Lake series, we also see how core and thread count vary from each of the processors. i9 processors had as many as 10 cores and 20 threads while the i3 ones could come with a minimum of 4 cores and 8 threads. What we are trying to imply here is that core and thread counts vary from each of the i3, i5, i7, and i9 processors and this further stretches down to generation as well. Still, there are plenty of factors to look out for such as clock speed, memory cache, and locked versus unlocked CPUs that have a great role to play in differentiating the processors. Clock speed indicates the number of cycles a processor can perform at any given second and is often measured in gigahertz. In that case, an Intel 10th Gen i9 processor with 5.3 gigahertz of speed can complete 5.3 billion cycles every second. Activities on your computer require a set amount of cycles for being able to execute. Take gaming for example. The more clock speed your processors have, the better the performance, resulting in greater FPS. The current generation of Intel Core Series chips, including the i3, i5, i7, and i9, is able to top at up to 5.3 GHz of speed for faster computing. Data retrieval is more efficient when the system cache memory is used. This area contains information that the CPU will likely need to get in the future, such as repeated protocol instructions and data. i3 and i5 processors often have up to 12 MB of L3 cache while you can get up to 24 MB on the i7 and i9 processors. Other features that set these processors apart are hyper-threading and turbo boost modes. Multi-threading technology enables each core to run multiple threads at the same time. Parallel processing becomes more effective with more threads. Therefore, one physical core can now handle multiple threads of software because it works like two logical ones. When hyper-threading is enabled, for instance, the Intel Core i9 10900K processor can have 20 threads. Lower tier processors such as i3 and i5 lack these features as they can only be seen on the top tier ones. You will often see an Intel processor with the letters K, F, and E at the end of them which acts as suffix and has a lot more to tell than just being there. For instance, an Intel processor that has the letter F at the end of it means it doesn't come with integrated graphics. Similarly, the letter K represents unlocked processors that can be overclocked. X represents performance and E represents mainstream ones. Keep these letters in mind while you are considering buying an Intel processor to get your hands on the correct one. It's a shame that Intel's ultra-performance Core i9 models seem so exciting but are out of reach of most users. There's a good reason Intel targets gamers, designers, content creators, and developers with these high-tier processors. Intel Core i7 is generally the best option and can save you a fair amount of money without compromising performance. 
i3 and i5 also seem like good options too if you are not that much of an intensive user and get a 9th gen to 10th gen processor will keep you in a safer spot. So this was all that you should keep in mind while buying an Intel processor. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and comment below to let us know your thoughts. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this on your feed.